Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Antelope Valley Fair. If you've been watching our other Demolition Derby uploads, and you're good to go. If this is your first one, you're catching a whole bunch of Demolition Derbies here at the Antelope Valley Fair, only on Low Budget TV, including figure eight racing from Thursday. But this is Sunday, and Tommy, we have compact cars ready to go. This is Derby Madness now. Let's, re let's refresh this point in the day, or the afternoon here at the Antelope Valley Fair on Sunday. Here's what we've done so far. We've started with, hmm. what's the right, let's see. We've started with the the, go, the goofy one, okay. right? All right? The trucks. Then how, we went to traditional. Okay, yeah. The stock cars. Yeah. Now we're into the infants, the, the compact infants, cars. Yes. This is one of the newest forms of demolition derby now that the old, Big cars are becoming harder and harder to find. The compact cars, the, these things are the future of Demolition Derby in some way or form, and the economical vision of Demolition Derby. And they're pulling onto the track now from left to right, or from right to left, the 69 of Dan Pacella, who won the Truck Derby. Oh, spoilers. Then, then the 156 of Robert Kenny. Then we have the 5150 of Kenny Guaver. We have the number 27 machine of Matt Chadwick. And the nine. The nine, I missed the nine. He just pulled it, I feel so worry. bad. The nine of Anthony <laughs> Gondola. And then here's Chadwick. And then, then we've got the pink number 199 of Paige Delgado. 49. SpongeBob. What's that? The, that's the 49 of SpongeBob. 49 of SpongeBob, Gilbert Estrada. He's been racing in just about everything here tonight. 15. 15 machine up next. That'll be Jessica Merchain. Cool paint job on that. And then the 11. The 11 machine cannot count out Jose Palacios. 16 machine, who we saw run the Enduro on Thursday of Gustavo Lamelli Jr. and rounding out the field, the number eight, who is just too shy to participate. That's Aaron Patton. Boss Baby. What's wrong just with Boss Baby? I think he's just a little nervous. Maybe he needs to get a, uh, a pit stop. Change of underwear, maybe? Uh, that's a bummer. Kind of a worst nightmare with these events. Though he was driving, he just never it went was, into the track. It was moving. He drove along the... We're, we're seeing if they're able to get this car back on track. I think they're waiting, too, because he drove. He literally drove around the arena back to the pit, so I wonder if he forgot something. It's possible. Maybe left his house keys. So, Tommy, compact demolition derbies, you yeah. and me. This is the division you and I can speak the most from because we've done a number of these. We've won a number of these demolition derbies. Uh, not here at the Antelope Valley Fair, but uh, at other locations like Irwindale Speedway. And, uh, and yeah, so, so this is these cars are like toys. They're totally toys because you can strip them down and get them ready within a week if you really wanted to take your time. We have and prepared cars in a day. And the fun thing about these cars is they're only good for one use, really. Right. And so you just build it as cheap as possible. You know it's going to get destroyed. And you just come out and have fun and hope that your car has a chance to win. Any of these cars have a chance to win because these cars, with as much electronics in them and how small and compact they are, anybody can have an issue, winner or loser. And this is going to be... How we're going to see it on the dirt here at the Antelope Valley Fairgrounds. Yep. Saw the emotion out of the driver. Looks like whatever the issue is with that eight, Bummer. it's not going to be something to get that car back on. And we are doing the countdown to see who wins the compact demolition derby in the 2019 Antelope Valley Fair. We're green. You almost don't want to be the first one to get out no. there in the middle by yourself. Because then everyone's got a target. You don't want to be that target. You see a big sandwich there at the start. All Use right. the rear end of your car. That is and, the part. And remember, we have the Mad Dog at stake. A couple of big shots on the left side, right in the center as well. See in here, everybody kind of spreading out, picking their shots. Being a little timid right now. That'll only last for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Like oh. you said, there's a Mad Dog Award up. 
Good hit by Estrada on the 15 machine. Dan with a kind of older style. Ooh, Ooh, sandwich in the middle. You do not you do not want to be in the middle for long here. No. No, you want to utilize those corners, get on the edges. It's kind of like those spiders that jump out of the ground and get you. You don't want to leave yourself exposed. If people see you sitting, it's a death wish. I feel like every car has lost a bumper already. A plastic right. bumper cover. Oh, and they're not just missing on the 16. Look at kind of a stack up over here. Palacio's making work in that 11 machine. A lot of work going on with Dan Pacella. He just threw something out of his car. I just want to say one thing. What the heck is he throwing out I'm of there? I'm not sure. <laughs> his at canteen. First, at first, I thought he was trying to pull start that motor. I think, I think something got in the way of a shifter. Yeah. I think he literally ripped out the center console of the car. I think that's what that is. <laughs> He's still stripping it. <laughs> <laughs> it never ends. Again, in the middle is not where you want to be. I once had a, uh, I was once taken out of a demolition derby because of a cigarette lighter. Yeah. That it locked up your shifter. It locked up my shifter. I was like, man, transmission's done. No. It wasn't. So far, everybody's still in it. Yeah, I, I think we're I think everyone's kind of playing around right now. So still. the 27 stuck over in the far corner. That's Chadwick, but helped out. Matt Chadwick and is free. He's free, really. I, I thought what you thought though. Oh, oh where is he going? 27. Somehow was going and don't get stuck again. Ooh, good shot here to the 49. Delivered from the 16, who took out the leader. Oh, there's a good shot from Chadwick to the nine. Nine has pulled the flag. So we're starting to eliminate some cars. To Anthony Gondola and the five-star auto dismantling Tiger 9 racing machine is done. He even dropped his window net signaling that he's okay. <laughs> And he's still getting it. Oh, but hit. now he's thinking about putting it back up. <laughs> Ooh. Good shot by the 16. Gustavo Lamelli Jr. Gustavo was in the uh, autocross, demo cross, on Thursday. Got involved with the leader. The leader took action back. Where's the 16 go? Gustavo doing a great avoidance through that infield. Yeah, that was great. We're in about this right front here. Take a look uh, at the actually front the end. right or left front. One of those is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> the 156 kind of no control. Going where the car will go. No control there for Robert Kinney. Nice shot to from the 116, but his car looks like it's so light that it didn't do anything. It's like throwing cotton balls at your competition. Now if the camera survives on Dan Pacella's 69. It's already been found on track yes. today. Oh, they're all stuck in the corner now. That's easy buffet for some hits for some of these drivers. Dan's kind of lining something up over here. Dan's kind of picking a battle. Who's got the front end exposed? It'll be the 27. Some of these hits are for show, by the way. Yeah. They're to show, like, yeah, I'm hitting. But it's not until you, you really get down to business. When a couple more cars start falling out, some of the more experienced drivers, that's when they start laying in the hits that hurt. And we explain in Demolition Derby, Jeffrey, how every hit that you put on somebody, it affects your own car. Yes, it it couldn't be more obvious in this derby. Right. Because it doesn't matter what you hit, your car's going to bend. They're fast, though. You see them. They motor around. Pacella, I think, has chosen Chadwick as his uh, prey. <laughs> Pacella is an all-black paint car. That's all he has. That's all he knows is black paint. Oh, big! So hit. he usually goes after the brightest car. Yeah. Chadwick again flirting with the the berm. Oh yeah. You see some uh, smaller tires like the 5150 Kenny's got on his car. Of course, Using the uh, donuts. Yeah. 
It looks like he has rear steer. In the back, the good thing about these front-wheel drive cars is there's literally nothing in the back that any of these drivers have to worry about no. other than the back of the trunk digging down, which is a very rare issue. And it looks like the 49, maybe an axle or a transmission. That's, I believe, an axle. The right, the right front of that car was leaning way over. So tough break for Gilbert Estrada. He's we've, waving his hand, all disappointed. We've busted our share of axles with these kind of cars. Very easy to do. All it takes is turning the wheel as you hit somebody with the front end. And if the wheel is the first thing to hit. Stick, which is a little obvious, right? We knew he was going to be dead. Yeah. Breaking your axles in these cars, man, they sound like you're in a meat or in some sort of an ice grinder. <laughs> yes, you, you're does. kind of afraid of what's going to come through the floorboard. Right. He convinces you to shut the car off. All right, so when to see. Still some solid running cars. The 199 looks really good. The 69 looks really good. Some of these other cars aren't looking as good, but are still running, and that's all that matters. 156 has had this broken suspension for a while. 5150 is, I think, a hit away from Dragon. Yeah. It's a good thing they put all the lug nuts on. And the 16 is still running. All right, so that 16, I got to give credit to the 16 machine. Gustavo Lamelli Jr., that right front was tore up before he even made it onto the track, before he even drove it into the tech area. He already damaged the right front in Thursday night's running, and as dangerous as an issue that can be, he's still running. Looks like a tie rod is busted. Oof. It's not Kenny Boisvert. It's Kenny Boisvert. Boy, Boisvert. 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 French. We didn't know that it was Kenny Boisvert until recently. Like 10 years of calling him the wrong name. Uh, they're the fireman on the track. Do you think the fireman's just like, hey, let's get this going? That was impressive. That was interesting. Um, While that happened, the 199, I think, has been taking a beating. Yeah, we didn't know that Kenny had a French last name. It looked French, but he just told us to say oh, Boisvert. 199 is out. Flag broke on the 199. Four cars left. The 69, Dan Pacella already won the truck demolition. Four left, like Jeffrey said, 5150. Kenny Boisvert, the 15 machine of Jessica Merchain. 69 of Dan Pacella and the 156 of Robert Kinney. I'm so impressed that 156 has lasted as long as they have. When you consider, the, I think the right front's been broken on that thing for maybe since like the first two minutes. I see a black flag, someone's pointing at somebody. Maybe tapping a. I'm not sure. Know. I don't know what that was a signal for. Uh, some tells me everyone's giving the time look to these drivers because yeah. because now you and I have been part of demolition derbies that have been like this where you have the officials going, well, well, what the heck? Like, why is this taking so long? Or why are the hits so light? But the thing is, from behind the wheel, you are calculating, you are yes. playing chess, you are figuring it all out. Yep. It's a lot more intense, and then you go, what do you mean that was a bad derby? Of course. Um, I'm not saying that that's what this is. I'm just saying that definitely one of the lighter hitting ones that we've seen probably here. And these drivers trying to go for the money right now. This yeah, is the money you, time. You don't want to knock yourself yeah. out. It's strategic. Not when you've made it to the final four. I think we might be down a couple cars, though. 51-50. Uh, nope, they're both still going. Everybody just kind of looking for the perfect opportunity. I just think everybody's car, also this happens in derbies, and nobody respects this. Sometimes these cars might all be full throttle right now. That's true. This might be We've all that's left of these cars. Dan Pacella's not really moving now. Uh, he's kind of moving. Like, this might be it. This might be all these cars have left. 
And and again, like I've been in a demolition derby showdown between your wife and I. Yeah. And we had people being like, "What the heck, guys? What the heck?" And we're like, "Guys, that's as hard as we could go. That's all that we had left." I remember one of the drivers that we compete with, Adam Ditto, out at Irwindale. <laughs> His throttle cable broke at the start yep. of the derby. He was driving with the air conditioning, using the power of the air conditioning. Other, and, and, and he now finished, that idle. He finished third because finished third. he kept touching things, and no one was willing to yep. waste their car to take him out yet because we knew he wasn't going to do anything. It does happen. All right, three cars. Pacella in the 69, the 15. The 156 of Robert Kenny Dunn. So down to three. Pacella, Merchain, and Boisbert. Here she comes, sneaking around the back side. Trying to set it up. These are so much fun, though. If you've yeah. never had an opportunity, but thought, hey, maybe I want to do a demolition derby. This is the perfect one to start in. Yeah, perfect. That shot to Dan probably felt like a million bucks right there. Yeah. <laughs> Fall throttle. Randy round. <laughs> NASCAR racing. <laughs> Kenny can't keep up. They work their way into turn number three oh, right Kenny's now. Kenny's going to back up on these guys. No, maybe not. Side by side. <laughs> there you Ooh. go. Ooh, but that could take out the 5150s right front, though. Could have. Look out. Here comes Dan now. Are you like me waiting for Dan to all of a sudden just have full speed? I am. But we'll see. Dan, look at that front end, the 69. Not one wrinkle on that front end. I think 5150 just went after the nine car. There we go. Down to the money, top three right here. Couple more crucial hits. Top three and a mad dog. Now, see, here's my other argument, by the way, because we've had people sometimes say, ah, at this point, you should just cut it. I say, hell no. No. This is a demolition derby. There's strategy involved. Both these drivers want to win. It's not that, you know, they they're, they don't want to win. The object is to be the last, last car Last one running. standing. And if, if, by God, if we determine that by who runs out of gas first, then we do it that way. That's what it is. It looks like Pacella might be out. He's looking down at the dash, it looks like. Waver's Derby to lose at the moment because the 15 stuck as well. Merchain kind of looking around, wondering what to do. Kenny's had a bad day, so this would be a good finish. This would be a nice redemption. Jessica looks like she's trying to adjust something in the shifter, like it's stuck in gear or not able to get into a gear. All right, I think the time is ticking for these drivers. Let's see. Flag and checkered. And one for good measure, right? Kenny wins. Kenny Boisvert, your winner. Kenny Winsvert. And was it last name uh, Boisvert or Boisvert? Boisvert. Kenny something, just won the derby. <laughs>